this is Andrew Poirot for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm Delob Jumbo O'Hara Davis here in London. O'Hara, first and foremost, how are you doing? Great as always, you know. Another time, my 22nd fight now, so just looking forward to getting in there on Friday night and just getting the job done. Let's get straight into it. Obviously, you was the fortunate one to choose the Golden Ball and you decided to face Jeff Afori. I know you've been asked this by everybody else, but what, why Jeff and not Tyro McKenna on the back of all the build up to the quarterfinals? Um, it's the easiest route to the final. What can I say? Boxing's about being smart and being smart inside of the ring and outside of the ring. Being smart and everything. And I'm not going to let boxing use me. I'm going to use boxing. What I mean by that is that's what Floyd said all of those years ago. And I didn't really understand it, but now I understand it. People let the support of boxing use them, as in they spend the whole boxing career trying to please the fans and the promoters and the managers and the people. And then, as a result, they lose themselves. And then when things go wrong, ain't these guys are not there for them. It's all about don't focus on trying to please anyone. Do what's best for you and for your boxing career. Regardless of who thinks what and this guy likes it or this guy didn't like it, don't care. As long as you like it, it benefits you and it makes you happy. That's the main thing. And I've got the easiest route to the final. And it, anyone else would have done the exact same thing. You mentioned during a press conference that you'd love to face Tyrone in the final because you think it'd be an even bigger fight. That's obviously provided he comes right past Mohamed Moon, who was a tournament favourite. If Mohamed was to defeat Tyrone, would you be gutted at all? Say if that is if you beat Jeff as well, would you be gutted at all that you didn't have the chance to face Tyrone? Not really. Not really. The fight's always going to be there, whether Tyrone wins or not. The fight's always going to be there. Tyrone McKenna is the name now. And the fight's always going to be there, whether it's in the golden contract or whether it's not in the golden contract. So, you know what I mean? Just see how it goes. You've got to take each day as it comes, each fight as it comes, and just see what happens. Let's talk about Jeff Afori. What, what do you know about him then and what should we expect on Friday night? What do I know about him? I know that he's easy work and what you can expect on Friday is uh, a swift knockout. Obviously, you've teamed up with Angel Fernandez now. Just talk to me about that and how exactly did it all first come about and where did it stem from? Uh, when me and my old coach parted ways, that same day I was in a car a bit distressed. I phoned Adam Hart from MTK. I was like, Adam, me and my coach are done. I'm not working with this guy again. I need a new coach. And... Angel was the one that I wanted and me and Angel, we met up, we sat down to see how we got along and we started to work in the gym together to see how we got along in the gym together training and it was a perfect match and we're going on good, so it's so far so good. Angel's obviously kind of burst on the scene over this past year or so and on the back of him teaming up with AJ, his profile's kind of shot through the roof. What's he like to work with in your own capacity when you see him? Obviously, he's working with AJ, he's got Zoltan Tubek amongst others. What's he been like to work with? To be honest, it's not really about what other fighters he's got. It's about what he can do for me and how he can improve me. Whether he had AJ or Zoltan, it's not really making a difference because as long as I'm improving. But I've learned a lot. I've learned a whole lot through him. But when he got on board, we only had six or seven weeks left until my fight. So he was like, I'm not going to overload your brain with too much information. I'm going to work on the stuff that you need to work on, like your foot movement your head movement, keeping your hands up, your speed, your power, your timing, your fighting style, my dodging, my counting, all of these important things that I've been doing good, he said, I'm going to make it great. And then for next camp, we're going to look at changing a few more stuff. How did you find, obviously, I know you might have been asked this before, but this time around, you have to prepare for three fighters. If it was in quarterfinals, you have to prepare for seven other fighters. What's it like in your own mind going into a camp and knowing that you actually don't have just one person to focus on you have to prepare for different styles I sparred a lot more southpaws I sparred, I sparred more with the southpaws I focused more on the southpaws because there were two southpaws and I thought he ain't, he ain't really a good boxer anyway so I don't really need to train for him really but um, so I've, I focused more on Tyler McKenna and the French kid so when the fur came up it's like it don't matter anyway this guy's going to be easy work um, but listen when I fought amateur I used to fight all the time and I don't know I don't know who you're gonna fight until you get in the ring. I don't know how many fights they had, I don't know the boxing record and at the end of the day a fight's a fight. So I spar for doctors, I spar samples and when I go in there I work them out and I take care of business. What do you make of the Tyrone McKenna Mohammed Mamoon fight? I reckon Tyrone McKenna 
could win this. He's got a good chance. Mohamed Moon looks good on pads, on, on a camera. Me and Angel sat down looking at him on the pads, look, looking at what moves he does. And I said to myself, but he don't fight like this. I've seen a few of his fights and I realised this guy is a natural welterweight and he, he won a few belts at that weight class. So now he's coming down to 10 stone. He looks drained. You see him at the, as you see him up at the open workout, he looks drained. You see him here, he looks drained, carrying some fucking, he's like a bottle. And you can tell this guy is making, doesn't make weight easily. And I think that affects him on fight night. And if he wins a fight, he will stop Tyrone to the body. If he doesn't, I believe Tyrone McKenna wins his fight. Tyrone McKenna is not a favourite, but I reckon he can do it. Now, Ahara, before I let you go, because I know you was ready to shoot off them before I grabbed you. This weekend, we also have World of Fury 2 out in Las Vegas. Just break it down for me. How do you see it going? It's a 50-50 fight, even fight, just like the first fight. They're both champions, world champions. Und they're both undefeated. And it's an even fight. But I believe Tyson Fury wins um, by a knockout or by a stoppage. I was just going to say, I know... Last, last question. Tyson said in the build-up he's going to look to stop him. He's wanting to sit on his shots more. He wants to throw his right hand a lot more. What do you make of that? Do you think it's dangerous that he could kind of allow his feet to set a bit more, knowing he's facing one of the heaviest punches of a heavyweight generation that we're currently seeing and further back? To be honest, I don't know. It's all about how Deontay Wilder is prepared and I don't really know. I think and I would know if I was in his camp, if I was in Tyson's camp, but I don't know Tyson's camp. I don't know his coach or the game plan so for me to come here and say that that's wrong that's me saying that I know more than his coach I don't know more than his coach that would be a total disrespect so I just got to say I don't I don't know it could work for him it could work uh, it could work against him we just got to wait till final happens and, and see well Lahara before I let you go what would you like to say to everybody ahead of Friday night easy work Lahara thanks Boxing Social thank you very much that's what you